when ill health or anxiety or, or one of the many ways that we suffer threatens to overcome us, people often wonder why God has permitted this to happen. People may even question whether God has abandoned them. Or perhaps, what have I done to deserve this? Why is God allowing this to happen to me? But this state of mind is entirely contradictory to authentic Christian understanding, Christian spirituality. We modern people struggle to even understand how alienated we really are from a true Christian understanding of our lives because we have allowed a worldly mindset to enter us. So as Christians we must ask ourselves how should we understand our temptations, our trials, our struggles? And of course we begin by asking how have the saints responded? How have the saints understood these trials, these temptations? How have they responded to suffering? What is the, the true Christian understanding of these difficult times in our lives? Well, first, of course, we may say the most basic, the most basic reality is that we are only able to approach God when we first pass through trials. We must pass through these trials, these temptations, if we hope to approach God. As the psalmist said in Psalm 65, we must first pass through fire and water. God examines and tests our hearts. This isn't, of course, because God lacks any knowledge of our hearts. In, in fact, quite the opposite. Only God knows the, the true disposition of the depths of our soul, the, the good and evil that, that truly sits within each of us. Only God sees the full depths, the true depths of us. Those true depths that we, we work so hard to hide from other people, and indeed, sometimes knowingly, sometimes without even a, being aware, we hide from ourselves. We hide the true depths of the good and evil within us from ourselves, because it is so painful to face. And the saints teach us that it takes bitter medicine for the truth of our inner condition to be revealed. For this, this hidden reality of our soul to be exposed requires bitter medicine. So that, of course, God then may restore us to health. It requires an exposure, the light of God, to enter the the darkness within us, the concealment within us, just as Christ entered the home of Zacchaeus, so too Christ's light must enter us and expose us that we may be healed, that we may be restored to health. And of course without this healing none of us can enter the kingdom of God. God allows trials and temptations to befall us out of nothing but love for us. It is God's love that permits these trials to befall us. His desire for us to return to him. And only God knows the, the nature of the particular trials each of us needs to be restored to health. We don't know, and we certainly don't know each other's. Only God truly knows the medicine required for each of our hearts. God even allows the demons to attack us. He allows the demons to attack us that we can respond and go into battle. Spiritual battle. And in every battle, God supports us. He gives us grace to, 
to fight. He permits us to taste this, this spiritual combat in order that, yes, we may, may be warriors, spiritual warriors, but that he may crown us victors. He calls us to the spiritual warfare in order that we may be crowned victors. The spiritual warfare has a common nature throughout all of history. But there is a new form of attack, a new weapon that the demons are equipped with in our modern age. There is a new battle facing our young people, especially, we may say, young men. Young men growing up in a world of, of screens, of technology, of, of continuous access to the internet. They are exposed to the possibility continuously of pornography. This new weapon that the demons use to, to incite lust. Of course the demons have, have always incited lust in men, particularly men and women too of course. But this is a new weapon. The availability of pornography is a new phenomenon for mankind and many young men, even we may say boys, young boys are growing up enduring this assault, this assault on the soul, something unknown by so many generations of men. And so often we hear young men say they feel they don't have the strength to fight this temptation. They feel defeated by this particular attack of the demons. Those who are afflicted in this particular way must understand, must understand the battle God is calling them to. We must see this particular assault within the context of the whole spiritual warfare. And carnal warfare, first of all, requires a, a longing to repent, a genuine, true longing to repent, a longing to be free, to change. But however much we may desire to change, change cannot take place without the grace of God. When lust is stirred, when, whenever we are exposed to any kind of image that may stir up lust, we must immediately hear God's voice calling us to fight, calling us to enter the spiritual battle. We must recognize also in every temptation the opportunity God is giving us to become a spiritual warrior and a spiritual victor. True spiritual wisdom is only acquired through struggle. We cannot acquire spiritual wisdom unless we struggle. It is acquired through battle, through spiritual warfare. As we begin to, to learn the strategies, as we acquire the, the skills, the skills of spiritual warfare, it's then we begin to grow in, in true wisdom, spiritual wisdom. It's, it's a wisdom unlike anything that the world can teach or, or even that the world recognizes. The world cannot recognize true spiritual wisdom. We may recall Saint Anthony of the desert, Saint Anthony the Great, who we are told was illiterate. He was an illiterate man living out in the desert and yet he became a spiritual master. He was filled with spiritual wisdom. Spiritual wisdom that not only taught those in his own time but through the centuries and continues to teach us who live today. A spiritual master uneducated in the world. And we, every one of us, we, we, we have no need of worldly philosophy. 
we have no need of the teachings of the world. The wisdom of God is acquired through faithfulness. Faithfulness in the heat of battle, spiritual warfare, spiritual struggle when temptations are stirred, when the demons attack us, when the world attacks us, when the flesh attacks us. This is our opportunity to acquire spiritual wisdom. If we want God's healing, healing of the passions that, that we feel enslave us, we must accept the treatment, the treatment that can so often be painful. Bitter medicine. If we run away from the pain, if we if we get angry with God, if we demand that God does things our way, that we want our lives to unfold the way we would like them, then the spiritual sickness that afflicts us will remain. We will shy away, we will turn away from the bitter medicine that is required to heal us. Let us, yes, show God our, our willingness but, and our longing to be healed. We must, we must reject, first of all, all, all evil thoughts, evil fantasies, so that the heart can be purified. The heart must be purified. And this is particularly true in the battle with lust. The battle with lust can can never be won until we purify the heart. But how, how do we do this? Well, we must guard ourselves. We, we, must, we must tame the imagination. The imagination, if it is allowed to run free, will not be free. It will be enslaved by the things of the world. It is a lie that the world teaches us about freedom, the true nature of freedom. We must guard ourselves from the, the bombardment of, of images, of noise that the world will, will throw at us. And we must learn to recognize evil, the true nature of evil. We must learn to recognize the evil even as it, it attempts to enter us. Something the, the Church Fathers call watchfulness. We must remain watchful over our senses. Watchful over the senses where temptations may enter us. And then watchful over the heart, the movements of the heart. The fantasies, the images, the ideas that we can catch before they grow within us. None of this, of course, can be achieved if we allow ourselves to feel self-pity or, or resentful over these trials or even over the, the bitter medicine that God offers us. As Christians, we must enter the battles God calls us to. And we must trust that however bitter the medicine, we are in the hands of the divine physician.